episode begins, I just want to give a little disclaimer. Unfortunately, my audio in my microphone didn't turn out, so I have to use the audio from my camera, and it is not as crisp as the episodes normally are. I hope it isn't too much of a bother, but anyways, let's get into the episode. Hello everyone, and welcome back to A Better You. I am Fernanda Ramirez, your host, and I am so excited for today's episode because I know it is one that you guys will get so much from. One that you will hear all my secrets, all my tips on how to look your best, feel your best, and enter this new school year, or if this is just a regular September for you, working, whatever, it is time for a little rebrand, okay? You're gonna get back into school feeling like the best you've ever felt, and at least starting off the school year right. We're gonna talk all about how to glow up for back to school, and I say school in the title because I feel like not just for me, but everybody feels like September is the start of a new, a new era. It's like a mini New Year's Eve, and I think it is the perfect time to, of course, if you're going back to school, to get your life together, to get your life back on track, to have a mini glow up, to brush up on your habits, your routines, your self-care. Maybe you want to do a little outfit refresh. Maybe you want to just set your intentions right for the year. And overall, just attack this year a lot more prepared. And I don't know about you guys, but I just love having a little fresh start and rebrand. If September gives me a reason to do one, you know I will be hopping on. This is going to be a series where we talk all about beauty, brains, mindset, and energy. And it is going to be a part series. So in this specific episode we're gonna talk about hygiene beauty all my tips and ways to enhance your physical appearance going into the school year again this doesn't just apply for people that are in high school but for college and if it's not college this can be for anybody even if you're just working if you're from Australia and it's just gonna be summer for you I'm so jealous of you I feel like this year I'm gonna have to go to Australia in the winter or some sort of sunny place where I can live out my extended holiday dreams or if you're in a different time zone or whatever I don't know when your school starts but I know that here in Canada it starts usually in September and in the US it might even already be starting or I think it starts in like August so I think this episode is coming out at a perfect time but I have gathered so much information so many tips and I want to say before starting this video that this is gonna be the long-winded in-depth very specific guide on how to glow up but I'm also going to make a YouTube video on this on my main YouTube channel which is titled Fernanda Ramirez if you've never seen my personal YouTube channel before I do a lot of videos on lifestyle fitness health health, wellness, self-care. I do a lot of routines. So I am going to film a main channel video for this topic where I show you guys me doing all of these things and where I give myself a little glow up because I want to feel prepared going into September. September for me is usually a month where I got to get my shit together because for one, it is New York Fashion Week and that always requires me to have a glow up, to be in the right mindset, to work out a lot before, to get my diet in check. And my birthday is also in October. So I feel like just the whole month I am prepping and trying to get my life back on track and especially where I am in this position right now like where my life is I feel like I'm just in a position where I want to get back to work I want to be consistent I want to get my podcast all in check my YouTube channel in check I want to start hiring a team etc so it is in my best interest to have my life together and why I'm going to be giving you guys the key on how to do that as well make sure you're subscribed to my main channel Fernando Ramirez to make sure you don't miss an episode of me doing this and make sure that you also follow this podcast channel on Spotify or on Apple make sure you give it a five-star Star rating and leave a review I would highly appreciate that and it will send good karma your way anyways I'm so excited for this video let's get on into it so back to school just to give you a little backstory on myself, I haven't been in school since 2021, which is kind of crazy. I graduated high school in 2019. My high school experience, honestly, I loved it. I had a really good high school experience just because I had a really great group of friends and I was very social during that time. But while I was in high school, I wanted to be a dentist, an orthodontist for that matter. I really thought, I really thought I was gonna go down that scientific route. And it wasn't until I went into college that I was extremely humbled and realized that the science is not cut out for me. Not to say that I couldn't do it if I put in the extra effort, but that was just not in my plans. It was not my destiny. It just wasn't meant to be. So anyways, I went into college, first of all, college, okay? Because I honestly, ever since I was in high school, I don't know, I feel like I didn't even have a strong urge to go to university. Maybe it's because I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I tell myself it's because, because 
becoming a YouTuber was in the works. But anyways, I went into college and I was doing a bunch of science courses and honestly, I kind of hated it. I remember that first winter of my college experience just being like the lowest time ever of my life just because I was like, I really hate what I'm doing. This doesn't feel like what I'm supposed to be doing. At the time, I couldn't drive. I didn't have my passion yet. I was just not living. Once I realized science wasn't for me, I was gonna switch to communications. I wanted to do PR and that's when I started my YouTube channel and then the pandemic happened and then all my classes went online. My YouTube channel really started to take off during that like summer of 2020. And then when the school year was gonna return again in September, I was like, parents, please give me a shot to just try this YouTube channel a little bit longer. And they said, not yet, be in school. And then I think it wasn't until like December where I had not even purchased the books for my classes that I was like, guys, I need to drop out. I need to drop out right now and continue this YouTube. And that's what I did. I just wanted to tell that story because I feel like a lot of people don't know about that. And I just wanted to, you know, this is a school related episode. So why not? Why not bring it up? I always get questions asked like what I would be doing if I was in school and if I'm ever gonna return to school. And as of right now, I don't have any foreseeable plans for that, but that's not to say that I won't ever do it again. Obviously, I think having an education is so important, but definitely if I was to go back, I would approach it way differently and do like courses rather than maybe a degree, but who knows? Honestly, that is all in the works, but I do miss being in that little school environment where you go to classes, where you have your books and your notebooks and this and that. Anyways, for you guys, going back to school, going back to college, going back to work, or just it's September for you. <laughs> Let's start talking about ways to glow up for back to school. I've divided this all up into categories and within all those categories we have subcategories. So really we're just going through a lot of things, but let's get on into it. We're going to start with the physical aspects. Now I feel like this is a disclaimer that has to happen no matter who you are and if you're doing a glow up video, but when we're talking about physical aspects, we know that glowing up is almost entirely based on your internal habits and beliefs like you can do as many physical things and still not feel or look your best because you're not taking care of your actual body and your mindset and your brain and your mental health is not a pleasant place to be in you know what I'm saying like you can go buy this go buy that get this done spend all your money on all beauty features and little upgrades and this and that and it still won't make you look or feel great without the stuff inside so that is just something to know but physical appearance and physical hygiene and tips to enhance your physical physical appearance do really play a role in your mental health and make you feel so much better, so much more confident and self-assured and have really high self-esteem, at least in my case. I also feel like when you're going back to school or something, I just remember the feeling of like, you know, you're finished school in like June for me, for example, and you go back in September and you want everyone to be like, God damn, she got a summer glow. She got a new hairstyle. She looks glowing. She looks stunning. Like I know the want to have this glow up and come back to school with everybody thinking that you look amazing. And also if you're like going into college for the first time, you want the first impression to count. You want to walk into that room and people will be turning their heads being like, God damn, who is that girl? I want to talk to her, I want to sit beside her, I want to be her friend. I, I feel like now that I say this, I want to throw this in here and this could be so controversial, okay? There's always this debate I see on TikTok about pretty privilege. I will say, we do live in a world that is very uh, superficial and unfortunately, your looks or your appearance do play a role in first impressions and that doesn't mean you need to look like a model or you need to look drop dead this and that and spend all this money on this and that. That is not what I'm saying. But I mean, having yourself put together and making a good first impression will not only attract other people people to you, make other people see you and want to be your friend, want to sit beside you. Taking care of your physical appearance really helps out in a lot of ways that you may not even take into consideration. And if it helps you and it benefits you, then why not put in a little bit of extra effort into the way that you look and the way that you show up for yourself and do that going into the school year. Again, just to point out, relying on physical appearance or pretty privilege or anything like that will not <laughs> secure you anything, but it definitely doesn't hurt. So the first thing I want to talk about is hygiene. Somebody is non-negotiable for hygiene may look different than mine, may look different than the next person. And I know that for some people having a hygiene routine or whatever doesn't come as easy to them. And I think that if you're at a place where that is the case for you, it is okay, but recognize that that's where you are and maybe get a journal, write some notes out for yourself, some goals for yourself in ways that you can improve this because you're just gonna feel so good about yourself, not only again mentally, but like physically, you're gonna feel fresh, you're gonna feel good. People around you are gonna say, you smell so good. Cleanliness 
happiness is something that is just the baseline and at least will give you one less thing to stress about or be self-conscious about or be worried about when you're trying to be in school and focus on other things. So of course for hygiene that means showering. For me that means multiple times a week. I mean if you can shower body daily that's great. Every other day great. I feel like I wash my hair like every two or three days depends when my workout schedule is and that in itself is its own issue. I mean if you guys can relate to trying to coordinate your hair wash schedule to when your social events are, when certain things are happening, and your workouts. It is just such a pain. But doing the basics in there like shampooing, conditioning is great. I love doing hair treatments every like week or week and a half. This can be a leave-in conditioner in your hair or even like oiling your hair or hair massaging. That is so great and so fun. And again, if remembering to do all these things is a little bit difficult for you, definitely find TikToks or YouTube videos where people are romanticizing the process and working on their hygiene or hygiene routines and it'll really get you so inspired and motivated to be like them and you might even find like a whole niche of videos where you're like I want to be like this I want to treat myself better and remind myself to make these rituals habits this also means having a good body wash or a bar soap that's like sensitive if you like to shave I mean having a new fresh razor having a fresh razor is so key to me so that I don't cut my legs or like make little nicks I love the razors that are like five blade just because they're so much softer and easier on your skin than like the three or the two but they are a little bit more expensive but they do really work I usually shave my legs with just like bar soap I don't really use like shaving cream I feel like I don't need it but that may be different for you I also wash my face whenever I'm showering I just have like my regular face wash which we'll talk about skincare and after but another tip I would say is to get like a loofah or an exfoliating mitt or even exfoliation scrubs which will really rub off the dead skin on your body and if you exfoliate before you shave your skin will be so soft and you will go to bed if you do this like right before feeling like a princess that is like essential for the everything shower and if you want to shave your legs before you go to school on the first day you are gonna feel like a queen walking into that school nobody even has to know but your confidence is up there if you want to feel really extra I would even say getting a pumice stone and pumicing I don't know what the word is but the back of your heels or your calluses on your feet you will feel iconic and soft and every inch of your body will be cleansed again you can also practice practice exfoliating your face. This will give you a subtle glow and you'll just be removing any dead skin cells and just feeling great. So we've covered shower care, but some other things that are really important in hygiene is taking care of your body, which if you want to get into the routine of putting lotion on your body after you shower, you are going to feel even better. I went through a phase in the winter of putting baby oil on my skin after I showered and that might seem kind of weird, but if you do this at night before you go to bed, you will wake up so freaking soft. The same thing goes with putting bath Vaseline on every dry area of your body your elbows and your knees or your feet and then putting socks on which I know is a crazy concept I know not everybody likes to sleep with socks on but sometimes you just got to do it for the soft feet and of course just putting lotion on your body I recently got one from Coda Lee I think is how you pronounce it and it smells amazing and not only does it leave my skin moisturized but I am shiny and I look so great whenever I'm wearing a skirt or shorts and it is the little things like that that really make a difference in the long run when people see you and I I don't know about you guys but I will occasionally see some girl and I'm like how is everything about her perfect like her skin is glowing her nails are perfect her socks are perfect and it's all in the little details so even having a moisturized body will give you a glow it'll make you shine and that's the kind of thing that really stands out when everyone is normally doing the bare minimum the other things you can do for your body is of course wearing deodorant daily if you forget to put deodorant on buy like three carry one in your car carry one in your bedroom carry one in your gym bag whatever keep one with you at all times especially in school when things can get sweaty, when you finish PE, maybe when you're running late to class. You know, you don't want to be the girl smelling like BO. And I know how embarrassing it is. I feel like when I was in college, like why did I go through a phase where like I just forgot to wear deodorant or like I would always lose them. And if I smell bad, I would be so ashamed. I would be so embarrassed. The whole time I was self-conscious thinking like, oh my God, I hope no one can tell. And just to avoid that as a whole, just make sure you carry it with you. One thing I will say though, is that having those little balls of like white deodorant stuck on your top or like getting a deodorant like stain on your shirt that is not a cute look and for your own good I'm telling you double check when you're putting deodorant on that you don't get it on your clothes because I feel like it doesn't doesn't look too good and it's something that's so easily avoidable I also love wearing spray deodorants because that just minimizes that problem and the last step in this smelling good routine for hygiene is having a nice perfume or a body mist you can have a body mist that you can spray on throughout the day and like a little perfume that you wear every morning this will not only make you smell amazing, but it will leave a lasting impression.
impression on others. Other people will recognize you if you have a signature scent and you can also romanticize everything having a scent. Like smell is something that really makes you have a strong connection and like a memory to something. So if you start the school year off with a new scent, you will constantly remember this scent and associate it with that time in your life when you started this next year. And also, I mean, if you're walking on the street and you can smell your own perfume, you're gonna feel so cute, so sexy, you're gonna be like, dang girl, I smell good. So like, I just think that having a signature perfume is iconic and it's the little things again. Next up for hygiene, we've got oral care. This means brushing your teeth morning and night, okay? Nobody likes talking to somebody with bad breath. Okay, they don't. It's so unfortunate and it's awkward. It's embarrassing. Like, let's just avoid that at all cost, okay? For that reason, not only is brushing your teeth so important for yourself so that your teeth are just fresh, clean, you don't get cavities, you don't get root canals, you don't have teeth issues or gum issues, you know, you just smell good for other people. If brushing it twice a day is too much for you, at least do it every night. And obviously flossing every night is great as well, but at least if you can do it every other day, a few times a week, it will be better than nothing. It will will get the gunk out of your teeth and it will save you from the embarrassment of going to the dentist and you bleeding everywhere and them telling you when was the last time you flossed because I have been there in the past and it is so humbling it is so embarrassing but I have recently fixed that habit and now I floss like every other day which I know it should be every day but you know hit or miss we are trying to be better okay the other thing you can do is get a tongue scraper to scrape all the little debris and gunk off your tongue so that you have a good breath again and you don't wake up with morning breath you can do this before you go to bed and oh Overall, just have good oral hygiene. You can also get mouthwash and carry mints or gum with you throughout the day so that you never have to go through this uncomfortable feeling of knowing that your breath smells bad. We do not want that, especially when you're talking to classmates, maybe that cute boy, that cute girl, teachers, we don't want that. Okay, and the last hygiene essential is to keep your nails well groomed. This can be your fingernails and your toes. If you don't get them done, like you don't get acrylics or gel, make sure that you're cutting your nails so that at least that white part isn't getting gunk stuck under it like if you see black stuff under your nail that needs to be cleaned either clean it or cut them but make sure that your nails are well groomed because again that is something so little that really tells a lot about how you take care of yourself and not only is it an act of self-care for yourself but it leaves an impression on other people and you don't want people to have a bad impression of you in case you forgot or you didn't mean to have it like that or whatever it may be so make sure you are regularly cutting your nails they're not getting too long and if they are long that they're well tamed and groomed make sure there's no dirt under them and if you want to get your nails done I mean I love acrylic they make me feel good and if you have a special occasion they'll make you feel good maybe the first day of school maybe your birthday holiday if you don't want acrylic then gel is always a great idea and it's a little bit cheaper and if you invest your money into one of those gel at home kits you can do your nails for so much cheaper and constantly be getting a new color which could be super fun for yourself and again just an act of self-care and maybe you even pick up a hobby of becoming really good at doing your own nails I bet you you can make a little side hustle and learn how to earn money doing other people's nails which could be fun but this also goes for toes make sure you're cutting your toenails long toenails are an ick and also I heard someone say this online that your feet are a big indication of how much you take care of yourself because it is something about your body that not everybody gets to see or that's not always on display it's just for you so if you take good care of them that means that you take good care of your entire body so don't don't neglect your feet just because you think that nobody can see them, especially if you live somewhere hot and you wear sandals or flip-flops. Do not let the dogs come out when they are looking all ashy and like untamed and uncut. Paint those toenails. Get gel. I feel like gel on toes lasts so long and it is something that you don't even have to do like bi-weekly or every three weeks. You could probably do it like every month and a half. I swear I get my toes done like every two months and not only does the color look so much better and they look way better in heels, but you know, they do that exfoliation they do the whole petty thing and like all the dead calluses are off my foot so take care of that as well and the last step in the hygiene routine of course is taking care of your skin and establishing a skincare routine this does not mean you have to go buy a crazy amount of products or have all the hottest things or because you saw some influencer talk about a product that means you need to buy that product no what I'm saying is figure out what your skin issues are and exactly how you can target them and find some products that work with you and your type of skin again this doesn't mean a 10 step routine that's going to take so much time out of you in the morning or so much time at night. I know you're busy. I know you're going to school. You don't have time, whatever, but you at least have time to like wash your face and moisturize it. This will get all the debris, all the junk, all the 
disgusting stuff off of your face that you don't want there and will at least not get you to having pimples in the first place or greasy skin or clogged pores or uneven skin texture like it's one thing having glowing skin and going above and beyond but at least don't let it get worse make sure that you invest in a good cleanser and of course moisturizing your skin is so important especially if you have dry skin or if you have eczema or eczema however you want to say it for me that is so important so having a good moisturizer is key some ideas for you in the morning you can use toner you can use an essence you can use vitamin c which i love to use to brighten my skin i love using a good eye cream i love using pimple cream at night on specific targeted areas i love using retinol which is really good for i think it's resurfacing the skin cells and like diminishing dark spots and wrinkles exfoliating is also great using a hyaluronic acid is perfect for making your skin plump you can also use salicylic acid like there is so many products that are perfect for your skin i highly recommend going to like a Sephora or the drugstore telling the people what your target issues are or watching some videos on skincare and at least finding like three products like a cleanser maybe like a, a moisturizer an eye cream whatever just whatever it is make sure that you find some products that work for you you can do this in the morning before you go to school and again at night to wash off all the debris or makeup off from the day and also investing in a good quality makeup remover and maybe a cleansing balm so that you can melt away all that makeup and you're not pulling at your skin I also love using a face oil and a gua sha to carve out my jaw and my cheekbones and just to depuff my face i feel like this is such a easy thing to incorporate if you do have a little bit of extra time and want to go that extra mile it really does make a difference again you can just look up a tutorial on tiktok or on youtube and it will show you exactly how to do it this also goes for using a facial ice roller i love mine and it's so great for depuffing your skin in the morning especially if you've got those early classes doing this while you're half asleep is going to wake you up and get you so energized for the day as well as depuffing your face and I don't know about you guys I feel like I didn't struggle with this when I was younger but as I've gotten older I feel like I wake up and my eyes are so puffy that used to not happen to me when I was younger but if this is the case getting a little ice roller will get it back to normal and then you'll feel like yourself again because that's all I need and I can feel refreshed I also love using the ordinary caffeine oil or treatment or something for your eyes it really brightens them and if you want to wear an eye mask or something as well to brighten that's also key okay moving on we're gonna talk about the fun stuff which is all the added stuff that if you have the bare minimum hygiene stuff done then we can move forward which is like makeup hair all that kind of stuff so starting off with makeup for school if you want to do a crazy look I mean go all at it if you have the skills and the time and the energy to invest it in your makeup do it if it makes you feel good do it and this doesn't have to apply to everyone I mean if you don't want to wear makeup that's also completely fine this is such a great way to express yourself if you choose to go that route I know that a lot of teachers or people in the workforce might tell you this isn't a fashion show and this goes for outfits makeup and hair whatever and they'll kind of shame you for trying or looking good but there is nothing wrong in trying that means that you care and that you value being there you value people's time and that you want to put in the effort to show up for them showing up in your pajamas or your hair half done can sometimes mean that you don't really care to be there or that you don't care to look good for them or you're just too tired or too lazy whatever but if you feel like you want to put in that extra effort don't let other people shame you for it. It's not embarrassing. You're not doing too much. You can take up space. And at the end of the day, people are probably only saying that to you because you make them look bad with how great you look. You make them look at themselves and say, okay, well, maybe I should put in a little extra effort. But instead of putting in that work themselves, they'll shame you for doing it. So don't be ashamed by putting in the extra effort. And if you do, go all at it. I know one of my friends always does her makeup for her work, like so extra and she'll wear heels when she doesn't need to. And I think some people have told her before, like, you don't need to do this but it makes her feel so good and she always makes so many friends it makes her so confident so social so like if that's what it takes for you do it and I especially would also do this because like I said it's a way to express yourself and to show off your personality without even speaking if you love the indie aesthetic or you love a bright colors or you love wearing shirts that have like bands or maybe you love vintage like it really tells a story without you even having to speak so you'll probably attract the people that have those things in common with you or like the same types of things and you will make friends easier and not only that but it might be a really good conversation starter I mean someone might come up to you with a compliment on how great you look or something about your shirt the same way that if you see something about someone else about their makeup or hair or outfit it is such a easy like entryway to starting a conversation since this is a video for back to school I think the easiest look of course is to do a light makeup look one that is glowy I highly recommend getting a good powder and a good primer and a good 
good setting spray so that your makeup stays on all day and it doesn't get like patchy or oily or start to peel off during the day. I also recommend carrying little touch up products with you so that you can fix your makeup throughout the day. I wanna say some tips that I would recommend to myself to back to my high school me was I was one, doing way too much with my eyebrows. I definitely could have gone a lot lighter. That's what I would tell myself. The second thing is I would tell myself to invest in a good quality concealer because that was one of my biggest insecurities was having like dark eye bags and especially when you may not be getting the best sleep, having a good concealer is your best friend. And of course, having a good powder that's not gonna make your skin oily or make the concealer fall off or crease is important. And the last thing is lip liner and lipstick. Oh my God, I did not use lip liner and lipstick when I was in middle school, high school, even the first year of college. And now looking back, like that was the problem with my makeup. I, I don't know why, I just hate the look of having like a full face or a powdery face with like just lip gloss or like nothing on your lips. You just look unfinished. So even if it's just like a light, balm with some tint in it it's gonna make you look so much better even a good like chapstick or gloss to reapply throughout the day makes me feel so much more hydrated and put together now for hair find a style that really suits you that makes you feel confident maybe before the school year starts you can get a little trim so that your hair looks fresh and maintained maybe you want to dye it maybe you want to get bangs I don't know but doing something with your hair is definitely gonna make you feel confident and also I've heard that hair holds memories or energy so if you want fresh energy going into the new year getting a chop or a trim won't hurt. If you also wanna do something with your hair but you don't wanna dye it, I think getting a gloss treatment can be really good and like look really great. I think that's what I'm gonna do before the school year because I want a little bit of a refresh but I'm not there yet to dyeing it. Another thing is having a good hair mask, which I talked about earlier, but the hair mask that I've been loving is the K18 hair mask from Sephora. It is so good and I feel like it's really transformed my hair. You could also invest in good quality hair tools and heat protection so that your hair doesn't get damaged and also even looking up ways to avoid damage or to heal your hair or just start like a little hair journey. I feel like I started my hair journey like this past year and I've really gotten into using a silk cap when I go to bed so that I wake up with my hair being so soft and not damaged. You could also invest in silk pillowcases, a good hair oil. I've personally been loving oiling my scalp and using scalp massager. This really stimulates growth and just makes your hair come in a lot thicker especially in your hairline if it's starting to get a little bit sparse. I think that's a big tip. I love using the Ordinary Hair Oil. It has something with the word hair density in the title that really makes my hair look a lot fuller. And one more thing, if you struggle with flat hair or greasy hair, invest in a good quality dry shampoo or just one from the drugstore. And also a dry texture spray is so good. It makes your hair a lot more voluminous and it'll look so much better. And you can even get a mini one and put it in your bag throughout the day. You can fix up your hair during school or during work whenever even having a little hair oil in your bag I used to do that when I was in high school and I would just like oil the tips of my hair throughout the day so they would stay looking refreshed and good and also even carrying a little hairbrush with you throughout the day is also really easy and I feel like either you need it or someone else will need it overall just embrace your natural hair texture and again for makeup find ways to enhance the features that you already have for example if you have beautiful eyes figure out how maybe you can do a winged liner or a perfect mask mascara or if you have big lips like a nice color that suits you or if you have freckles make those show off next up we're going into outfits and I kind of touched on it a little bit earlier talking about how an outfit can be such a good representation of yourself but if you want to do a little outfit refresh before school I used to love doing that and you could really just go to the mall or go online just pick up some basics that you know you're gonna be wearing throughout the year I think it's so helpful to have a good basic staple wardrobe like a good pair of jeans a good black shirt a good white shirt, good pair of trousers, etc. And then having fun accessories to build off of that. Those fun accessories, you could totally thrift. Not only are they going to be so cheap, but they're going to be so unique, so different, and so personal to yourself. Some great stores that have these basic items are Aritzia, that is like super popular in Vancouver. Zara, Skims has great basics, and I feel like there's a lot of dupes on Amazon. I feel like Amazon US has better dupes than Canada has, but definitely Amazon. And for some fun stores, which also have basics, but definitely some cuter pieces like Princess Polly, Tiger Mint, 
Venus, Beginning Boutique, Oak and Fort. All of those stores I really love and I shop at myself. If you even want to get a new pair of shoes, this can definitely freshen up your outfit. Such a simple thing that you're going to be wearing daily. So it will be an investment in itself. I think some shoes that are really popular right now are the Adidas Sambas. Just investing in good quality shoes that you can wear throughout the like eight hours or however many hours you're at school is so key to feeling comfortable and happy all day because the last thing you want is for you to be agitated and annoyed sitting in your classes because your shoes don't fit or something. We do not want that. And if you're balling on a budget here, you don't want to get new shoes, get a little toothbrush, put some soap on it or even a little washcloth and just wash the shoes that you already have to give them a little bit of a refresh and to make them look almost brand new. I would also highly recommend checking on Pinterest or on TikTok for some outfit inspiration. If you want to go above and beyond, which you don't need to do this, but if you want to put in that little extra effort, make sure that your clothes are ironed. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but my mom gets mad at me. She actually gets mad at me if I take photos and my clothes are wrinkly or if I would go out to like see friends or whatever and my clothes were wrinkly. I don't maybe this is a Mexican household thing, but like wrinkly clothes were a no-go. Ironing your clothes is such an easy way to look more polished and put together. This also goes for wearing clothes that are form-fitting and actually fit your body. I know that especially with the trends and whatever, it's so common to want to wear something that is trending, but it's also important to wear things that actually flatter your body shape and your body type. For example, the Levi 501 jeans were so popular. Emma Chamberlain wears these jeans and she would always rave about them and a lot of people rave about these jeans but I realized and I've tried them on so many times these jeans just do not flatter me a lot of the people that wear these like Emma Chamberlain are very small and skinny and petite and they're like straight cut not saying that I'm not small but I feel like I definitely have more curve to myself that like those jeans just do not look good on me which something that gives a little bit more curve and is maybe a little bit more flared at the end is a lot more flattering the same way that some tops just don't flatter flatter my chest. Find out what kind of body shape you have and what pieces are going to make you look the best because having pieces that are form fitting almost look better on you than having something that doesn't fit you right but it's trending. Also make sure that your clothes are clean. This can be tricky sometimes. I also get things dirty all the time but having a good routine of doing your laundry not only will make you feel so much put together but you'll smell good, your clothes will look clean, you'll feel good in them. Again it leaves a good first impression and if you don't really know how to do the laundry First of all, ask a parent. Second of all, watch a YouTube video. Just figure out how to do that. And if you can't do the laundry for some reason, you can hand wash your clothes in the sink or in the shower. Or if you just stain one little thing, you can just clean that with some soap. You can also get a little tied to go stick so that if you get something dirty and it's white, you can clean that real quick. One more thing is I love getting lint rollers. This should be a non-negotiable in everyone's house because doing a little clean on all my articles of clothing, especially if they're black, is just so helpful helpful. It is chef's kiss. You'll get all the cat fur off, all the lint off, all the dust off, and you'll look so much put together. Honestly, I think there's nothing that bothers me more than having a black shirt that's like hairy and has like little things on it. Okay, so now that we touched on hygiene basics such as shower, skincare, body care, teeth, some fun stuff such as makeup, hair, self-care, etc., and outfits, I'm going to talk about my own personal favorite things to do. Some of these cost more money, some of these don't, but I want to say them because some of them I didn't already mention, but I guess you can call this kind of like my maintenance routine and the things that I do to make myself feel best on the outside which is kind of high maintenance but recently I've gone into this mindset or I don't know I've kind of discovered this thing where sometimes it takes being high maintenance to be low maintenance which means say you get your nails done every like three weeks or once a month it might be more effort but day to day you don't have to put much effort into looking presentable because you already look presentable now one of the things that I love to do is take care of my teeth and I've recently loved doing oil pulling which is where you you have a spoonful of coconut oil and you swish it around in your mouth and you can do it for like 15 minutes and usually I'll do this like a few times a week you can do this daily or you can do it like once a week or bi-weekly whatever but basically you swish coconut oil in your mouth for 15 minutes and I'll clean at the same time so that it doesn't feel time consuming and it provides so many benefits for your teeth I have here that it is good for your oral health it reduces plaque it manages gingivitis so like it prevents it from happening it also has a whitening effect it reduces bad breath it has potential for detoxification it moisturizes your mouth and it aids for TMJ disorder 
So overall, I like doing it because there is a lot of benefits, but it also says online that some might not experience significant effects. So if it doesn't really do much for you or you don't really feel like it, you don't have to, but I feel like it's a little extra step of taking care of myself that I enjoy doing. Another one being using whitening strips by Crest. Using these in excess is not necessarily that good for you, but once every like three months I'll do this or right before a big event or before school I feel like is a great time and it really does work so using you know a whitening strip oil pulling brushing your teeth like all of that is just going to make your teeth be so shiny and bright and a confident smile makes everyone feel better so that is essential for me I also love using a whitening toothpaste the other thing that I love to do is take care of my eyebrows. Now, I already have pretty thin eyebrows, but I regularly pluck my eyebrows like whenever I see some sparse ones. But if for you, this means getting them threaded or plucked or whatever, it always just looks so nice having a clean eyebrow. And I also love getting my eyebrows laminated and tinted. You are able to do this at home, but it takes a little bit more effort. I'm actually gonna get my eyebrows laminated and tinted today as I'm filming this episode, but it just makes maintenance for your eyebrows so much easier that whenever you do your makeup, they're like already basically done, so it takes so much less effort. And same goes for getting your lashes done. I love doing a lash lift and tint. Again, I'm gonna get one today, which I'm super excited for. If you've never gotten a lash lift, they basically just lift up your lashes and they stay permanently curled for like, a month that's how long mine lasted or like a month and a half two months and you don't have to curl your eyelashes they're already lifted so they look so great even when you're not wearing makeup and you don't have to curl them like i just said you just wear regular mascara it doesn't even have to be waterproof and your lashes look great and curled you also have like so much more of a wide appearance and that with the eyebrows combined you just look snatched one more tip i forgot to mention was that eye drops of course are also helpful they make your eyes look moisturized and it can reduce redness which i think is great for making you look fresh and youthful another thing that I personally really like to do is getting facials I don't do this that often but I definitely do it before a big event or maybe once every few months if you get facials that really target your areas it can be so beneficial and I think it really just helps with clearing congestion in your skin I love going to Lux skin lab which is here in Vancouver I think it's like in Burnaby actually I've gotten a facial called the ice and cold facial before there which was great the hydra facials are great it just like cleanses your skin and puts like boots of serums and hydration into it. I also recently got one that was called like a aqua hydra facial or something like that. Oh, and I love getting chemical peels. That like really resurfaces your skin layer and just makes you glow. Oh, I forgot to mention also, make sure to invest in a good SPF because the last thing we want to do is get wrinkles or skin discoloration or literally skin cancer. Like we don't want any of those things. So having a good SPF that you wear daily, even when you're inside, even if you're like in high school, I feel like having an SPF is so important. I love the Elta MD sunscreen. It's tinted and it also provides a nice little tint if you don't want to wear makeup or if you want to like only wear concealer. So I highly recommend that. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about was having staple accessories and like jewelry. I think having staple jewelry that you wear all the time is so cute because again, it just kind of feels very personal to you and people can remember you by something. And it's kind of like having like a staple scent. It's like having staple jewelry. So investing in high quality jewelry can be great or even jewelry that you can interchange depending on your outfits And it also makes your outfit look so much put together and more unique and This goes for anything any accessory honestly wearing a t-shirt and pants can go to like a full outfit If you wear it with the right bag the right belt the right jewelry the right bracelets Like there's just so many ways to style an outfit and to make it so much more stylish and trendy and just like put together Rather than just like a top and pants, but yeah anyways that was so long-winded But that's everything that I want to talk about in the physical aspect of glowing up for back to school and this new season in general. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope I didn't miss anything, but if you guys have any tips on how to glow up physically that don't involve the internal aspects because I'm going to talk about in next week's episode, comment them down below and let the other people know. Make sure you follow the at a better you Instagram and I will see you guys next week on the continued glow up series. I love you guys and I will talk to you very soon. Thank you.